When your team feels that you have enough information to answer the inquiry that you posed, that's when um, both the collection and analysis end. To assist teams in analyzing evidence, I'm going to suggest a five-step approach. This approach involves organizing the data first, becoming familiar with it by reading the data, and then describing, classifying, and finally interpreting the data. Organizing the data involves putting it in a form that will help facilitate the analysis. It's a facilitator's job to kind of tidy it up, and that includes ensuring that it's dated and that it's labeled, that it's legible, and uh, that there's enough copies that uh, everyone on the team can um, take a copy with them. The team really needs to get to know the data that's in front of them, so reading it involves um, walking away, comprehending it, um, becoming familiar with what's in front of you. Um, sometimes this is an individual activity and, and sometimes groups might do this in, in teams of two or three, um, but generally facilitators can uh, provide the data in advance so that when the team comes together to describe what they're seeing, um, they'll have already had a chance to become familiar with it by reading it numerous times. When you're describing the data, um, it's important to bring a lens of objectivity. Um, Teams often want to jump to an interpretation phase, um, but it's important just to really describe the facts. What do you see? Um, and it's the facilitator's job to ensure that teammates use factual statements only. And at this point in the game, trust the process and don't jump to interpretation. So sometimes I will model the difference between a fact and interpretation that's based on assumptions. Um, for the team and sometimes it's difficult but you need to have the strength to call people out when they jump to the interpretation at this phase. When classifying the data it's important to look at all the information that's in front of you and break it down into smaller chunks and so this is when we really start to identify the themes and patterns and create coding and classification systems. Perhaps the strategies I'm looking at involve assessment practices. I might uh, use AP to code assessment practices, but in this particular stage when you're classifying, again, it's about breaking it down into smaller units. So in those assessment practices, I might further break it down by showing the three parts of a lesson. So in this particular minds-on piece, there were some assessment practices used in the action piece and in the consolidation. Um, what assessment practices were being used and ensuring that the team has a similar coding system in place. Once your team has coded the data, it's important to review it. And in the review process, you can ask yourselves a few questions. Is the theme reflected in more than one data source? Are smaller patterns contained within the themes? And if so, what are they? Upon close inspection and the review, consider is the evidence a good fit? During the final step, teams interpret the data, and that's really about imposing meaning on the facts that are in front of you. And again, teams can ask themselves some questions to help facilitate this process. What does the data tell us about the problem? What are the assumptions we could make about the students and their learning? What are some things we could do to deal with this? What are the strengths and weaknesses the team sees based on the data? Once you've answered these questions, your team's next steps are to synthesize the information into some general conclusions and understandings.